Ron Hollifield, this founder of SGR, which helps organizations recruit, assess, and develop leaders. Ron is a servant leadership provocateur, challenging organizations to use the principles from his book, Fourth Dimension Leadership, to achieve higher performance by living up to their values, and it has worked like crazy for SGR. SGR has grown an average of over 16% per year over the last decade without any salespeople, without an advertising budget, and without following any traditional marketing strategies. My name is Jordan Bunch, and this is Mavericks. You're in the private sector, but you're working for the public sector. Right. Um, and that was born out of you working in the public sector. So talk to me about sort of the origin story of strategic government resources. Sure. I spent about um, 20 years as a city manager. And um, in that process, my next to the last city was extraordinarily tough. I actually spent a year wearing a bulletproof vest at the suggestion of the FBI. Really? <laughs> and um, that, that took it out of me. So I just found I, I did not have the patience for that anymore and had a guy who lived there in town that was uh, the closest thing to LBJ that was still walking in those days. And he made me just an extremely attractive offer to take over his business that was representing companies that do business with government. And so I took him up on that, kept that company about four years, grew it into the 49th largest lobby firm in Texas, and then sold it because I really hated what I was doing. Um, made a ton of money doing absolutely nothing good for the world whatsoever. Um, getting people appointments and, and things of that sort. Started this little company while I still had that one, got it on its legs and then sold it to an employee and then uh, started this little company in 1999 and uh, it gave me the opportunity to stay involved with local government. Uh, the, the sense of really doing stuff that makes a difference, um, very, very important to me, um, and yet was able to make a good living doing it, and uh, it just kind of took off and, and went crazy. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. Crazy, crazy. Talk to me about what Strategic Government Resource does. Um, our tagline is that we w help local governments recruit, assess, and develop innovative, collaborative, authentic leaders. In other words, the number one responsibility of any leader is raising up the next generation of leaders. So recruit, assess, and develop is how you do that. Innovative, collaborative, and authentic are the types of leaders that are going to be able to thrive in today's VUCA world. Uh, we define authentic as leaders that walk the talk of servant leadership principles because we really do believe that in today's world that are, those are the characteristics of leaders that are going to make the greatest impact. If you took all of servant leadership and distilled it down into one little tagline, it would be, it's not about me, it's not about now. Yeah. And so what we constantly try to do is create that environment that, environment that is looking externally, yeah. um, that really does believe it's not about me and it's not about now or the short term. What's sort of going on in the culture of your company that's helping to foster this idea of servant leadership? A variety of things. Uh, one is that we actually provide every employee a week's paid leave to go give. We had a team of employees went down to the border a couple of years ago when there was the surge in unaccompanied minors uh, helping out there. 
Uh, we've had a group, uh, had several employees go to Guatemala and help build an orphanage. Almost anything, the only rule is it can't be about you. What are you doing to stay grounded, to stay humble, to, to be able to foster the attitude of a servant leader because you can't fake that. Absolutely. If you do, people are going to see right through it. Pro probably two things. The first quote from that great leadership guru, Barney Rubble. <laughs> Barney Rubble said it takes a smart man to know where he's stupid. So the first characteristic of authentic servant leadership is having the genuine humility to know where you're stupid. Yeah. The second part is having the wisdom to act upon that. You know, in, in, and it takes both wisdom and courage to, and particularly in today's world, in which there is so much phoniness and there is so much facade, yeah. it really does feel risky to be able to just be honest about where your weaknesses are. And yet the very thing that allows you to build a great company is great team members. And the key to great team members is that you have a healthy understanding of each other's strengths and weaknesses. Because it's the only way that somebody else can shore up my weaknesses is if they know what they are and they know that I know what they are yeah. and that I'm at peace with that. So y'all's focus on relationships absolutely has completely transformed the whole conversation when it comes to customer service issues. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what the issue is, protecting the relationship is our first priority. You can never avoid or prevent ever making a mistake. Yeah. But what you can do is respond to the mistake in a way that that customer or that client knows that you legitimately, deeply hurt that you let them down. And you actually build so much more loyalty in how you respond to a mistake than you ever do if you never have a mistake in the first place. You've, you've got to be hungering to fail. And what I mean by that, I strongly believe if I've got the choice between having, uh, trying three things and succeeding in all three, or trying 10 things and succeeding in five of them and failing in five, I'll take the 10 effort, I'll, I'll take the five successes and the five failures yeah. because we still have accomplished more than if we hadn't otherwise. But yeah. you can't build that kind of an environment if you're looking for somebody to blame. One of my mentors has pounded into my head again and again and again that it is untrue what they say and that you learn from experience. What is really true is that you learn from your reflection on that experience. Absolutely. As long as something is the policy or the procedure, we've got to be incredibly rigorous in enforcing it. Yeah. while simultaneously being incredibly aggressive in questioning it. How do you grow from your, your roots to where you are today affecting 50 million people? Um, we just really think that if you're delivering excellence, you're truly honoring the relationship, and then you're sort of omnipresent, the business growth will take care of itself, and it has proven that. Wow. What does a what does a week in the life of Ron <laughs> Hollifield look like? I spend most of my time networking and communicating with people, and then the other thing is I don't have a life. <laughs> so I, I mean, it's the it's the danger of all entrepreneurs is that because you are passionate about it, yeah. you've got to be really cautious that it can be all-consuming if you're not really, really careful. So we were in the car on the way up here, you said something like you're 1,600 or 16,000 times uh, more apt to change than most of your team members. 1,888%. 1,800%, okay. So you're, you're 20 times almost <laughs> uh, more apt towards change Absolutely. Than, than your average employee and probably just the average person in yeah. general, which is- Absolutely. 
is probably true of many entrepreneurs. Many of our listeners are going to be much more apt to change. Absolutely. So what's, what's next? Where I really see my next 10 years primarily focused, there is so much dysfunctionality going on politically. Mm. Uh, there is so sure. much pain. We're in a divisive country right oh now. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. And it's playing out in every city council. It's, it's interesting. Uh, I spoke week before last at a state municipal league to a elected officials luncheon. And one of the lines that I shared, one of the, the specific things I shared, is that treating people with honor, dignity, and respect just because they're fellow human beings is not political correctness. And what's interesting was the applause broke out. That's wow. never happened before. What that tells me is that the pain is it's getting deep. is deep. The yeah. pain is so deep, they are so tired of the pain. For me personally, I see me spending more and more time trying to work with elected officials to, uh, to inspire them to be the person deep down inside they really want to be instead of being seduced by the hatred and the, you know, the political operatives that tell you that the way to do it is to be nasty. Simon Sinek's video on the power of why, every entrepreneur ought to watch that video. It's on YouTube. And, and what he basically, where he goes to is that people don't do business with you because of what you're selling. They do business with you because of why you're doing it. In the midst of this divisive culture that we've created over the last couple of decades, it seems like, but it's just come to a head recently, I think, having a, a software, a system, that does what it does with this this match.com mm -hmm. idea of what you're doing with with local government. But there is so much even in that of cultural bias Absolutely. with even something as simple as a name on a resume. Well, yeah, the the um, there are extensive studies consistent over many years that somebody named Joe with identical resume will get more interviews than somebody named Jose or somebody named Joanne. Implicit bias is real. The reason we make so many dumb hiring decisions is because we think we are capable of making good hiring decisions. Yeah. Anytime something is brought into the light more, it exposes the darkness in ourselves. Absolutely. Where we can begin to un, uh, unveil our biases well, and see that maybe I'm making decisions based off absolutely. of and things that shouldn't be. Absolutely. And here's what's interesting is completely take ethics and morality off the table. Extensive studies, Harvard Business Review has run numerous ones, McKinsey has run numerous ones. Companies with more diverse employee bases, more diverse leadership teams, more diverse boards are more profitable. It's just good business. Yeah. And part of that is because when you have a more diverse team, you bring a more diverse per set of perspectives to decision making, yeah. which means you overcome more of your blind spots. Yep. So when the economy crashed, at that up leading up to that, we'd never had any debt. We'd entirely bootstrapped and had never borrowed any money. Our business dropped 29% overnight, and we got through that. We, we did it by, I borrowed over $200,000 in credit card debt, That's right. plus took some money out of retirement plus went to no paycheck for almost a year. The trick is you've got to have a really brutally objective self-assessment yeah. because that's where that's for sure. some folks get into trouble is that they're believing in a, in a puff of smoke instead of something tangible. 
So you've got to really have just a brutally objective view of yourself and your company and go, okay, here's what it's gonna take. Yeah. And if you don't have that, it'll tank on you. Do you have people in your life who can speak that to you in a brutally honest way when necessary? Or how do you how do you do that to yourself or, or do others feel like that for you? Well, I think part of it is just attitudinal. In other words, you're constantly hungering for the weak spots. Our humanity causes most of us to look for affirmation. You've got to constantly focus on the negative. And I say constantly focus on the negative even while I say that I am an intense optimist. Yeah. Um, but you can't be optimistic objectively if you don't know where your weak spots are. That's what I love and appreciate about uh, you know, working with other small companies, other startups, is because they're so much more nimble than these huge companies. Right. It's really hard to turn a moving train, freight train. Absolutely. You know, but driving around this, uh, this little BMW, it's a lot easier to make that, that sharp turn. <laughs> Well, and the other thing that a lot of entrepreneurs and business people in general, a huge mistake that gets made is that they are so invested in the path they're on, they, they don't know when to let it die. And so they will take and go, but we've worked so hard to make this work. Let's just, if we'll just try a little harder. Yeah. My experience has been, if something isn't relatively easy, it's not ever gonna happen, you know? And, and so you just, you can, you can get caught in the trap of pumping tremendous energy and resources into mediocrity. You know, it's not quote unquote failing, so you keep trying to breathe life into it, yeah. but it's not thriving. For me, part of the rule is don't ever become emotionally invested in any particular pathway. Mm. You know, if it's if it's not working, you've got to be willing to cut it loose and focus on something else that will work. Crazy.